Hi, welcome to online tutorial videos from JCVR Labs. For more information and to download the source code of this video, you can visit us at www.jcvrolabs.org. In this video, we will learn how to remove noise uh, from a noisy signal from MATLAB using filters. So let's open MATLAB. So this file will be available uh, on uh, on our website to download. So first of all, we will simulate a noisy signal. You can use any other signal which you want to denoise. So in our case, we will first simulate our signal. So let's first define the sampling frequency of the signal that is 500 hertz. Now let's say we have a 10 hertz of uh, of uh, signal frequency and our signal is x equals to sine uh, okay prior to it let's define the time range so time range goes to 0 to 1 by fs to 1 second and let's plot our signal and let's first describe our signal that is sine 2 pi f into n and let's plot it plot n into x so this is our signal which we have generated now let's add noise to it so we'll generate a random signal y that will be of same length as that of x so 1 comma length of x and then we'll generate a noisy signal by adding this particular random signal to our original signal x plus y and now let's uh, see our signal in 2 comma 2 comma 1 plot n comma z so this is our noisy signal so most of the time signal is like this so uh, if you have any other signal based on your interest you can visualize it and if there is noise which is not of use then we will learn the procedure afterwards like how to remove that particular noise okay so after it first of all we need to understand the spectral component of the signal that means where our main signal lies and what are the several other, other noisy components which we want to remove so if you know it in prior like uh, in which uh, in which frequency in which frequency range your signal lies then you can directly design your <coughs> filter but if you don't know like in which range of frequency your signal lies you first need to do a spectral analysis and that is very important to do so we will do first uh, fft of the signal and we'll learn uh, in which range our signal lies because right now we are uh, uh, as we are assuming that we did not know that the signal frequency of 20 hertz prior we just get get this signal and for now first we'll get the frequency analysis of the signal so in order to get the frequency analysis it is very common to use the fft transform but FFT transform uh, uh, versus frequency scale is a uh, there is a small formula for that and for that we need to define first the length of the signal that is in Z and then we will define the number of FFT points which we want to take like that is next of 2 to the power to the length of the signal so suppose our signal length is uh, uh 638 so we if we take the fft of 512 points that some of the information may be lost so we will take the fft of 1024 point that is next of to power the length of the signal so that's what we are doing here the so next power 2 of l so if we get any ft then it is 512 and if we get length it is 501 so length of the signal is 501 so our next uh, our, the number of points uh, like uh, fft points will be 512 and now we will take our fft so that goes in z underscore fft it is simply equals to absolute value of fft or our signal that is in z comma uh, number of points like any ft 
so our signal has been taken now uh, we need to display it on a spectral scale so in a spectrum on x-axis there is a frequency on y-axis there is a magnitude spectrum so by this z FFT we have got the magnitude spectrum but we need to create the frequency axis so there is a small formula for creating a frequency axis because we know uh, in digital domain or in FFT our uh, frequency uh, repeats itself and it go up to 2 pi so in order to convert into hertz uh, this, uh, this is a simple step fs by 2 multiply with line space 0 comma 1 comma like your uh, fft of 5 and 2 length so we will need only half of the uh, component we got half of the components to define the frequency because rest of the half uh, fft will be repeating itself so and f and fft it is an eft by 2 plus 1 so i hope this uh, frequency we have defined this frequency scale now we will plot it uh, subplot 2 comma 2 comma 2 which we already defined plot frequency and the number of signals which uh, we want to plot it so frequency contain this variable contains a frequency axis and our z underscore fft and we only want to display the same number of components so it will go to length of freq otherwise there will be a dimensional error so now if we go to our signal okay so this is our signal fft or our signal and uh, if we look at this frequency components let's zoom it and take the horizontal zoom only so by now we can now understand okay peak is at 10 hertz and this is just the uh, dc component of it uh, we are getting a peak at 10 hertz so now we understand okay 10 hertz frequency is there and all other there's noise and we want to uh, pass or we want to filter out this signal only and we want to remove all other signals so now we will define a band pass filter which starts from 8 hertz to 12 hertz in order, uh, so that uh, this 10 hertz frequency don't lies in the roll of factor of the in roll of uh, region of the uh, filter and it's lying the pass band region only so after taking this fft you can decide okay what should be the frequency range of your filter so now we know okay these are the frequency range so we will define uh, first of all low uh, now we will try to design our uh, band pass filter and we'll take a butterworth filter so prior to it we need to define the order of the filter so let's say we are taking the order five and then we need to define the cutoff frequencies of it so cutoff frequency needs to be in radian right now the cutoff frequency which we are defining 10 8 and 10 these are in uh, Heard. so we need to convert into a normalized frequency that is simply fs by 2 and now we can define a simple filter we get we can get the coefficient of numerator and denominator of the filter simply by this command butter order of the filter comma range and then the type of the filter okay so this omega n is wrong it is 2 by fs sorry for that and now let's define again so our, our filter has been defined so now if we <coughs> if we want to check the frequency response of the filter in order to see whether uh, frequency response is right or wrong or right to, as per our requirement so let's say f r e q z b comma a comma okay let's say we are 0 to 0.4 and sampling frequency is this okay so now we can see okay this is the pass band and after that is going to minus 100 db so let's say we have horizontal zoom okay so uh, our filter is right and in between range 8 to it needs to be between 8 to 12 right now the uh, range is 10 so let's uh, do a small change into it 
and let's define omega n okay instead of 12 10 we need 12 here and again let's say figure now it should be 5 yes let's say between 8 to 12 only so our filter has been defined and and we can also plot we are also shown or also know the frequency response of the filter and that is up to the mark so now we can display it on the same plot and then subplot okay subplot 2 comma 2 comma 3 this particular command gives us the uh, spectrum complex spectrum and the frequency range so in order to get the magnitude spectrum of the filter and that to ndb we need to define uh, we need to do some routine changes until log 10 of h okay so uh, so for that it needs to be absolute of h so now we can see our response of the filter here again and we can check okay it's within 8 to 12 range so now it's time to filter our signal uh, we know we have a spectral we have done a spectral analysis of the signal from that we understand okay this is the range of our signal which we want to extract from the noisy signal and then we have defined the filter or created a filter with a specific range and we are also show uh, know uh, whether our range is uh, whether our design filter is right or wrong by uh, taking its frequency response and by visualizing its frequency response now it's time to get the filtered output so let's say z equals to fill it's simple filter b comma a comma the original signal so now your filtered signal is z underscore fill so now we can plot subplot 2 comma 2 comma 4 and then we can plot n comma z underscore fill so this is our design filter these are uh, starting points uh, are such that due to the order of the filter so up to 0 0.1 second uh, like a filter is initializing itself kind of thing so if the samples are high or uh, we can take larger duration uh, we can neglect this particular portions or, or for the lower order of the filter. So after that, uh, our signal noise has been completely removed from the signal. So this is the beauty of the filter. From this noisy signal, we can attain this uh, 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 smooth signal, uh, which is without noise. So we have created uh, this. Uh, a small script for the same for doing the same and this will be available on internet uh, let's change the date 28 by so let's run in the signal we have a 20 hours signal frequency and then we are trying to remove uh, the noise from the signal so this is our noisy signal this is a spectrum and this is a filtered output so we can do one more thing uh, instead of noise suppose we have two signals of two different frequency let's say we have sine of 2 into pi into okay so there are two signals at 20 hertz and let's say 5 hertz signal so 500 signal will be 5 into n by 5 so let's run it so this was a, a, a composite signal okay it contains the 5 hertz signal as well as a 20 hertz signal and by looking at the spectrum or this uh, magnitude spectrum of the signal we can confirm the same so right now this has uh, two different frequency components 5 hertz and 20 hertz but we want to extract only 20 hertz of frequency component that's why we have designed our filter in such a way that it passes only 20 hertz and stops all other frequency components so at the output that is a filter signal nice filtered signal uh, which has removed all these 5 hertz frequency and all other noise and we have get this smooth 20 hertz signal out of it
so we can also uh, get the five hertz signal from there we just need to define this passband frequencies of the signal right now we were trying to pass a 20 hertz signal so suppose we want to find we uh, are trying to extract only five hertz signal which has been defined by here so let's run it again okay so now this five hertz signal is there but uh, we are getting certain components because the uh, the order of the filter uh, uh, as the range of the filter if we go uh, it is not properly attenuating the lower frequency component or the higher frequency component so let's say by let's see what happens if we change the order of the filter okay now uh, those ripples, small ripples have been removed and if we look at the uh, order of the uh, frequency response of the filter we can also see the change and that is due to now it is within 1 hertz it is up to going to minus 100 degree but that was not the case earlier but uh, we have removed the signal at the cost of this small amplitude uh, degradation at the starting so at the end you have got a nice fiber signal out of this uh, composite signal so based on it if you have uh, some noisy signal noisy say ecg signal or any other signal so based on the design of this filter you can extract out the required signal or the wanted signal from the noisy signal so i hope you understand a lot from this video like how to uh, denoise a uh, noisy signal using matlab and through the filter designing so i hope you like this video and please subscribe our channel for more such video so that's it for this video thank you